These are a new fig trial here. Grown them in pots in the ground. This is LSU purple fig. Did you cut the bottom out of the pot or are you leaving the full pot intact? Pot intact with just some drainage holes. Okay. Yeah, so the nematodes, for those who don't know, the nematodes are all up in that top area of the soil and they just attack fig roots. So you put a fig in the ground and it just sits there and five years later they're still this tall. It's nematodes that are doing that. So doing the grafting, but also I don't have enough plants right now. So just getting these in the ground in these buried pots and they're filled with potting soil that doesn't have nematodes. So far it works. I don't know if they'll catch up to them eventually. This is ground turkey. Um, LSU, Scott's Black, LSU Improved Celeste, Green Ischia. Yeah. Oh, shout out to my friend John Starnes. These are his Oh, flowers. big shout he, out to John. He's, he's awesome. He sends me cool flowers. So that's one of his. And then these pink roses over here are his too. Florida Cracker Rose? Yeah, Pink Cracker. Nice. Yeah. So this is the greenhouse. This is kind of where all the craziness goes on. Oh, here's a uh, cherry of the Rio Grande. Ooh, exciting. These are very, very unproductive for me. Hmm. Unfortunately. Uh, so this is the greenhouse. We have this small greenhouse. Um, so trying to squeeze in a lot in here. So we're propagating plants that are gonna be planted on the farm, given away to friends like Pete or sold i sometimes i dabble selling online also we have a sales nursery we can see uh or who knows what else so there's all sorts of propagation going on also trying to grow some fruit in here there's mango canistel carambola um, edamoya jibota kaba miracle fruit uh, dragon fruit different things Yeah. That was liking it in here. The Javota Kaba and Miracle Fruit really like having their feet in that water. Some of the biggest Miracle Fruit I think I've ever seen on that thing. Nice. Yeah, so I've tr I'm always trying to evaluate new germplasm and planting material and plant it out and see what happens. So this is kind of where most of the weird rare stuff is before it goes out. So things like this. This is a... Uh, it's a crazy solanum, a tomato eggplant relative. It's Solanum pachyandrum and it's some, some, somebody gathered this in Peru somewhere. It's a thorny crazy thing that makes a fruit that's supposed to taste like um, Jolly Ranchers or something. Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, different mulberries, always collecting those. Uh, the really special stuff's back here. Uh oh. New chayote. Uh, you can see that some of the different shapes and colors of these. That one's kind of elongated in green. Um, or things like this. This is uh, Texas persimmon. Pull this out. It's a persimmon that's native to Texas. And for those of us that can't grow black sapote or chocolate pudding fruit, this is probably the next closest thing. It's kind of like a little black sapote that's this big from Texas native to Texas, so it'll grow up into North Florida probably in terms of cold. I just grafted that. Um, these are um, like, you know, natal plums, the little red fruits. These are improved ones that are supposed to be super extra delicious. They're kind of fun. This is a persimmon I collected on the Peace River. So I, it had big fruit, a native persimmon. So the first year I slashed the roots a little bit with a machete to cause it to make a sucker. And then the next year I went back and dug the sucker up. Slick. How about that crazy bamboo you got over there, Josh? Yeah, this is a real special bamboo. I'd like to start propagating and getting out there. It's uh, it's solid. It doesn't have a, a hollow uh, inner node. Or the inner node is solid, but in between the nodes it's not so, It's Yeah. For about 10 feet of the pole. And wow. then it starts to... So this was taken from a little higher up, you can see it's starting to get a pinhole in the middle, but it's basically solid. So it, it feels like a baseball bat. The poles are just really wow. heavy. Yeah. It's um, Bambusa membranacea uh, clone. Nice. Yeah, there's all sorts of craziness over here. Different plants I'm hoping will be fruitful in Florida. A lot of these, probably the first time growing in this area. Special uh, mulberries back here. 
So this mulberry right here is, um, I just did some grafts. Oh, look, there's a bud. I just, I just potted these a few days ago. This one is from my friend Craft and Clift, and the fruit is literally like this long. Wow. And it's not Pakistan or Himalayan, it's something different. So I'm real excited about that. Mangoes are coming on. This is a Pickering mango. So it's a dwarf variety. There's some pretty good sized ones. It's a really compact dwarf and it's super delicious mango variety. So it's the, probably the best choice for in a greenhouse or something. Prickly pears are another thing that I think could have potential. Um, the uh, puntias that make good fruit. You can't find much information, but um, in um, Mexican families will have them grown in their yards and they make good fruit. And I've eaten them, so that's where I got that. I just knocked on the door and asked. <laughs> People are talking about citrus, got to do it in shade with the disease, so I put in these kind of living fence posts, shade trees, and then did a row of citrus in there. And they seem pretty happy. I lost two, but I'm going to replant. Is that the interlobium, or what are you using on these? Yeah, it's guanacaste, interlobium, and there's tipuana tipu. Nice. Different things. Yeah, papayas. What I love about papaya um, as you can see, we're having an abundance of papaya. Um, what I love about them is it's less than a year for fruit. So you can plant them in between longer term trees and you get a yield while you're waiting on your, say your citrus to get bigger. And they really only last a couple years. So it's in and out and then other things can take their place. Uh, and they just make so much fruit. Nice. I tell if you want to eat fruit every day, plant the papayas. This is a shade house. We grow out root stock and some plants to sell in here. Like these are loquats that are going to be grafted. Canistels, guavas, whatever. Um, this is a little, it's called a non-mist propagator. So it's a little humidity chamber and some cuttings that are hard to root um, might root in here because they're um, it's so humid. Don't have a whole lot going on in here right now, but a couple of rare cuttings up top. I've gotten some things to take in there that I haven't been able to do anywhere else. I like starting to grow more flowers because I was always just food plants, food plants, and I think the flowers add something really special. Rose. Especially epic varieties that do well here, yeah. huh? I've been pretty successful with that one too. We use them on our jobs. This is a soap nut. So it's a, it's in the lychee family, and this makes a nut that you can throw in with your laundry and use as detergent. Wow. It actually will sud, suds up and makes soap oh. suds. So we're real um, scroungers out here. Okay, so this is grass that. Um, was in the landscaping up at the school. They cut it down and throw it in the woods and we go get that for mulch. <laughs> those are bags of leaves people rake up and put on the side of the road, we go get those. And then that was a farmer's moldy hay bales that we went and got those. <laughs> One man's trash is another man's yeah. treasure. Yeah. Huh? I love it. So this is a kind of a tropical um, food forest kind of deal. Uh, I protect this with water. Um, so some of the more cold sensitive stuff I put all together in here. This is um, kefir lime, or I guess now there's a new name for that because that's, I guess, like an offensive uh, vulgar word. Yeah, but kefir lime, this is an aromatic one. You cook this in Thai curries and then fish out the leaf at the end. It's really nice. Patangatuba, Patangatuba, Eugenia, hasn't fruited. 
Josh, right. for people that don't know, could you elaborate on the water for uh, a second there? Yeah, so you can protect cold sensitive plants with water. So you run overhead water at night on a freeze night and if it's just going to be a frost, the water running over the leaves and the humidity keeps the frost off. If it's a hard freeze, the ice will actually entomb the fruit tree right at 32 degrees. Nice. You keep it running and um, in the morning when it warms up, it'll all fall off. And so if it was 22 out, you were 32 still inside of that ice. So we've pulled all, like, see that sapodilla back there? Came right through uh, 24. Canistel came right through 24 with no leaf damage, really, just from the water. And we're talking last winter, too. It was brutal. <laughs> yep. So this is red mambin. And we call this jocote around here. That's the Guatemalan name. Uh, or hog plum. Yeah. It's a spondius fruit. There's lots of types of this around that the local um, Hispanic gardeners have. Different varieties. Longan. This is a seedling um, tropical jujube. Sugar apple. Dragon fruit. This is a uh, fishtail palm that makes multiple trunks and you can harvest the trunk and eat the inside like a heart of palm. Is it a special species? It's Caryota mitis. So not all fishtails are that species then? Um, there's different species of okay. Caryota. Okay. Peanut butter fruit. You were surprised with the cold hardiness of this one too, right? Yeah, it doesn't like the shade. I have a healthier one over there, but... Uh, it wasn't protected that did fine? It was protected. It was, okay. This is our sales nursery. So, um, we're still learning how to do this. We, we give a lot of tours and local people would want to get the plants, so we decided to open this. So we're trying to offer all these useful edible plants to the community for an affordable price. Also make a little money if we can. So we've got a little bit of everything in here. So if you were wanting to do edible landscaping at your house or just get some of these plants, you can always, we're kind of by appointment, give me a call or shoot me a message um, and you can come out and our plants are, are cheap. Um, we have chaya and Thai basil, Jamaican cherries, longevity spinach, mulberries, you know, all of it, moringa, whatever. Nice. It's kind of a ragtag operation, but we're making it work for us. It works. Yeah. These are white sapote. White sapote is kind of a subtropical fruit. They're not really tropical. I saw these growing where they're native is in Guatemala and Mexico. I saw these growing up at 5,000 feet elevation in Guatemala. Wow. Up with the loquats and peaches. So they really can tolerate some cool weather. Um, at 24 degrees last year, these defoliated, but then just came back. And they're setting flowers, and there's already some fruits on here too. Nice, yeah, mine are setting fruit too. That's they're, pretty exciting. They're pretty cold hardy. I was pretty surprised actually how well they did. They're in the citrus family. It's a fruit about that big with white flesh you scoop out with a spoon. Trying to, so the whole thing with the fruit for, for us, we're trying to plant enough diversity of fruit that uh, every day of the year there's several fruits to eat. And that's, for us, we just want to eat that. But also it's a food security strategy for people in other countries where you have nutritious stuff to go pick every day. So if it's not mango season, maybe it's black sapote season or there's jackfruits or there even little things. There's um, Barbados cherries or whatever it is always having things in fruit. And I'm trying to develop a little calendar where you can, at, for here, where you can see what month of the year everything's available so I can even improve it a little more. I have a feeling this will be in your book? Yeah, so I am, yeah. I am, maybe, yeah, I'm, I'm writing a book which is kind of tentatively called 75 Food Plants for the Central Florida Home Garden. So I'm basically writing a chapter and that number of plants may shrink, okay. but we'll see. I'm writing really in depth about each plant growing in this climate, how to grow them, and all the ins and outs of each of those plants. Forthcoming. Nice. Yeah. And I'm hoping to make it available through some sort of DIY. I'm not really planning on going with like a publisher or anything, just kind of doing it myself. So we'll see. So bamboo is another thing we really do a lot of. I have 25 or so different types here. and. They're, 
so useful. One, um, part of the green wall, living green wall around the whole property here is uh, the bamboos are all around, kind of blocking the wind and hurricanes and things. Also for construction, there's so many species with different uses for, you can eat the shoots, the leaves are good for the goats. You can really just do a lot with them. Yeah. The material for days, nice. Yep, this is old hammy eye. Yeah. What's your favorite variety of bamboo out here? I wanna go see Which it. one excites you the most? I wanna go see it. Yeah, where is it? Let's okay. go. This is the road through the village and we've just planted mixed fruit trees and bamboos all through so it's beautiful and fun but also there's fruit to pick the whole way. Okay. Loquats and persimmons. Tried to plant something for different times of the year all through here. Pindo palm, jelly palms, pindo palms, cat like guavas. Josh, what got you into this? Um, well, I moved down to Florida in 2010, passionate about global hunger issues, okay. and kind of just ended up fitting in here and found myself here. So that's really why I do this stuff is hoping to um, create a more just world where everybody in the world has access to nutritious food so if a lot of that work right now is right here in this community just trying to provide the plants that um, we've been donating lots of produce over to the uh, my friend Rick's got a um, place he's working with uh, migrant farm laborers in Immokalee just whatever we can do, you know, but ultimately hoping to train people that are going to go all over the world, improve people's lives, and then make a local impact. Love it. And I just love it. Yeah. I love plants. Okay, this is my favorite bamboo that we grow here. It used to be called Bic, um, like B-I-C. Its old name was Bambusa bicica tricata, which is a real mouthful. But they recently brought in a new bamboo from China that's actually that, and this is something else entirely now. So this is Dendrocalmus validus now. But it's my favorite because it's, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest diameter um, calm we can grow in Central Florida. There's specimens of these north of Orlando that are 20 years old with big five inch poles that came through the hard, hard winters of probably seen 18, 20 degrees. My friend, took this through 21 degrees and and at 24 degrees here it really didn't take any damage. So the dendrocalmus are usually the more cold sensitive uh, like asper and all those. Um, so this is basically like an asper type pole but it will take cold. And they're really hardy, they're always green, beautiful poles and they're fat, fast growing. I had some success air layering the side branches. This one I think didn't take but um, you can take a saw and you cut three-fourths of the way through and you uh, well so there's all these sheaths little things you rub all that off pack a bag on there of peat moss or whatever and wrap it up and they, they will root exciting time of year for that um, Found anything works better or? it seems like the months where it's actively growing okay. maybe better pushing yeah so right here you can see there's these little they're called root primordia they're little nubs where in nature, if it fell over something, it might be able to grow roots out of that. So that's kind of what you're tapping huh. into there. It's a pretty harsh climate out here, so we're trying to kind of green the desert and slowly planting trees along the road so it's all in shade eventually. It's really... Uh, I was going to say, it looks like what you're standing in when you got here, right? tough conditions. Yeah, it's windy, it's hot, it's dry, it's, Ugh. it's challenging. So what better place to prove this can be done, you know? If you can do it here, you can almost do it anywhere. Yeah. Although I guess we get more rain than some places. The right time of year. So this is a new um, planting of forage crops for the animals. So the goats are in these pastures, so you can just cut and then throw it over the fence directly adjacent toward where they are. Um, so one way we prepared this land is running the pigs in that tractor down there, little piglets, and they love tearing it up and eating the little grass nubs. So they weed it, but they also fertilize it. And I didn't realize how dramatic that effect would be 
But we noticed we put in the strip of sunflower and we only had the pigs up to the halfway. And everywhere where the pigs were is so much greener uh, from the, I guess, just the nitrogen. It's night and day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a real cutoff. That all got pigs. Eucalyptus here. The same eucalyptus we saw earlier. Trying to grow Suriname, or I'm sorry, um, seminal pumpkins as a ground cover underneath just to get a food crop while we're waiting on those trees to develop. So pigeon pea, eucalyptus, seminal pumpkin, and then uh, citron melon. Citron melon for the animals. Weedy, tasteless melon, but produces a lot of seeds for the chickens and pigs to eat. Pigs love it, huh? Yeah, these were just throwaway pigeon peas we just dropped in here, so we okay. rather than dumping them. Yeah. These pigs get lots of rot, uh, old, weird, old snacks from the kitchen. Whoa! Old yep. stuff people donate. Hey. Pigs love chocolate frosted flakes. <laughs> That's the, the key. <laughs> hey, keep up the good work. They're freaking out. They must have heard food. Yes. Yeah, so these are our uh, storage onions. These were in the bed where the sweet potato is now. They start kind of nodding over, and that's when you pull them. And we braid them up and dry them in here. And then we'll, once they're dry, they go into the pantry and we'll store and use them throughout the year. Believe it or not, it's actually not enough. We need to grow like three times as much for all of our onions. So I'm, wow. next year I'm going to scale up. Have you yeah. found varieties that work better here? Um, anything short day, you know. But these are just from a local farm store and I don't, I'm not actually sure the name. Just bought the sets, okay. Yeah, cool. they're hard from seed. I do it sometimes, but they're okay. hard. Yeah, these red ones um, make your eyes water when you cut them up so they're high in sulfur. Those would be good storage types. Nice. How long do you leave them hanging out here? A couple weeks, two, three weeks. And then they go into the pantry? Mm hmm Okay, nice. This is a, it's a fuel-efficient cook stove from Honduras. This is, really? Yeah, so it's it's a kind of like a rocket stove design, but then in there it's all insulated. So you put in small diameter sticks. And it's all insulated, so all the heat goes into this uh, into this griddle, and then you cook right on it. So in Central America, it's tortillas and stuff, but you can also just set a pot on there. Wow. And then if there's any smoke, which it's usually smokeless, but if there is, it goes out away. People have these right inside their houses. So they're safe, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really great. We basically tore it apart there and figured out what they were like and then rebuild it. This one's a uh, rocket stove bread oven. So there's a rocket stove here, and then this inner chamber is where you put your bread or your pizza, and this door goes on there. And uh, yeah, cook bread. Cassava bread coming out, huh? Yep. Nice. So if you want to uh, support our efforts out here, you can always come out and buy plants at our nursery. Um, we also always are in need of donations and volunteers, but you can also just come out and get a tour, come visit and see what's going on. And yeah. How about if people want to get a hold of you, Josh? Well, you could uh, write me an email, joshua.jameson at warner.edu, or find me on Facebook. Cool. Write me a message on Facebook. Put that link in the description, Josh. Thanks so much. I'm not fantastic with getting back to emails. Okay. It's better if you just call me and show up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome work out here, Josh. Yeah, thanks. Keep it up, man. Thank you. All right, guys, next stop, native plants for an install we're doing next week. I know that uh, you got a ton of epic information here today with Josh. He's, uh, he's by far a wealth of knowledge. I can't wait till that book comes out. Links for heart will be in the description down below. Josh's email will be in the description down below. If you ever get to the Central Florida area, I know that Justin Rhodes even did a video here. Come see this place, it's pretty epic. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so and pound that bell to stay notified. And most importantly, pound dirt. Thank you.